Good morning. Welcome to Free Motion Fridays. And got a couple of ideas to share today. Um, if you can hear me and you can see well, go ahead and let me know. And I'm going to just kind of wait for that, give people a chance to click into the broadcast. Let me grab my fabric and we'll get started in just a second. Hi, Jill. Welcome. Let me grab that fabric and get it up here. So here's kind of where we're going today. I've been doing just a little warm up. Okay. So we got some cute hearts, like a chain of hearts like that. And awesome options for some triangle borders that is continuous and able to be varied, which I really enjoy, giving you the option to put a lot of different um, designs in there that suit the style of your quilt. And then kind of a rolly circle. Um, it's going to look a little different than this. This was just testing with one color, but one of the ideas I have for today is, I think you guys probably know, many of you, that I think trying to make everything very precise and very matchy is hard. It's very hard and that is not my skill set. <laughs> that is not the thing I'm good at. So one of the ways I thought we could camouflage that is by changing thread colors and going over the design again. Now you have to be willing to obviously quilt it multiple times, but I thought we'll just demo that and you can see what you like and give you some options for how you might want to deal with some of your things. Okay, we'll start with this cute little heart border. It doesn't matter what the space is. So I'm gonna say that up front, but I will tell you this is, um, I think this is one and a half. Let's go ahead and measure these so you can have that visual reference. So this one space down here is one inch, and this is one and a half, and then two. The reason I made some different sizes is I want you to practice at the size that you need. So if you, want something to be a certain size, then practice it at that size. Okay, don't try to practice it at four inches if your quilt is three. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna make just some visual references. I don't care if they're perfectly perfect, if they're one inch or whatever, it's fine. Don't worry about it too much. For the heart, we're using this as a training tool. And once you get comfortable, maybe you won't need these lines anymore. So one of the hearts is gonna fit inside the space, right? Visually, it's gonna fit inside there. But what has to happen is when I curve down, this has to go to the halfway point, right? So he's gonna fill. So this center line right here is the middle of this heart on this side. So halfway again. And this is gonna have to touch. And then again on the top, the heart will fill. So on the bottom, the line will be the split. The heart will be on both sides of the line. And that's your mark for where your heart will align. And then this one is an S curve that's gonna have to come back and touch and fit in the box right here. So this is the top of the heart and he's gonna swing down and this is the bottom heart and then flip like that and then flip okay so let's go ahead and we'll work that and I'll do it across so I know the chalk kind of gets in the way sometimes but that's important for you to have those visuals and what that tells you or me or anybody is we can make these boxes any size. So if I have a four inch and I want this kind of a border, I can make a four inch box and I can split it and I can make a much bigger heart. But again, it's really important that you practice at the size that you want to complete the design. So a good idea is to practice it at multiple sizes and that will help you develop your quilter vision. So let's see, let's make sure we can see it. I think we'll try to do it this way. I think that's probably going to be best for you. So let me kind of get this contained over here so he'll behave. All right, so here we go. 
we're kind of in the center right there and I'll tack off a little bit. And remember that the lines are gonna go away. So I'm not trying to be ultra perfect. I'm just trying to be nice and smooth, nice curve, a little bit even as best I can. And here I wanna touch. So in the middle, I wanna to touch, so curve out to touch. I'm adjusting my hand position. I think I'll go a little bit faster. It's gonna help me move a little more smoothly. To the middle, curve back, dip, and try to touch right there. Now, I can't move anymore. My hands are like way out here now. Woo! Bring them closer to your body so that you can be more comfortable. That way you'll have better control. So halfway for this heart, touch, dip. Make sure you dip because that's what creates the heart. Come in here and come down a little bit so you can get that nice pretty shape in there. Dip. This one's a little bit big. So I'll just try to kind of swag him a little bit later. So I feel like he kind of got off track. That box was a little too big. So now you'll be able to see that we can do it without our boxes, because I'm ignoring them now. That box seemed like he would have put the whole pattern a little bit askew. So I'm gonna look ahead. And as I come around, this one has got to touch right there and fill that in at that halfway, right? So touch, half the distance, and then back to that halfway point. Okay. So half, he should basically be at the same place where that other S ends right there at the bottom. I don't think we can fit any more in. We'll kind of come up and then this guy would probably come back around like this. Okay, we'll just tie it off here because we can. Alrighty, let's see how we did, right? I don't think that this is super easy. I don't think it's perfectly matchy, matchy or whatever, but could I live with this on my quilt? I think I could. I think I would be very happy with that. Now, some people, they just want it perfect, right? So we're gonna show you an option for perfectly awesome later, <laughs> okay? So we'll just leave this for now because we have to change thread color. So let's do all of the blues first and then we'll switch it over and we'll use a different color afterwards. Okay, so that's how you can start the practice and develop your vision and your spatial relationship. And then as you get more comfortable, then you can deal without the guidelines. So guidelines can be very, very helpful. The triangle one, I wanna use a larger space. So I'm gonna use this. This space up here is three inches. And again, we're gonna use that box development theory. Okay, and you'll see why. I mean, there's a lot of value to it. And if you want your boxes to be like exactly three, you can have that. Here, we'll just, we'll do that for you because Let's see, is that three? That's not three, that's like two, let's see. Two and a half, okay, so we'll do two and a half boxes. Oh, see, I was pretty good. My visual estimation has gotten better over my lifetime. All right, now we have too many lines. Hang on just a second. We can't have all these lines there, it's too confusing. I love my eraser, my Bohin chalk eraser. See, pretty good, I can see exactly where my line is. Makes it nice and easy. Okay, so let's go ahead, we'll just mark these. This will help you see like how much effort do I want to put in to have this ultra precise design. I don't have to have it ultra precise because these lines will go away. But if I take the time and I actually mark these boxes, then I am going to have a little bit more precision and a little bit better visual balance. Okay. So obviously this does not fit perfectly, but this is about the halfway point. The halfway point is one and a quarter, so it'd actually be to right there. So we'll use this as the visual for that side. Okay, 
So here's what we're doing. If this is the middle of the space, right, we're going to come down to the middle with as straight of a line as we can. That's kind of curvy, but whatever. And then we're going to close the box. Okay, so there's my triangle. It's basically an isosceles triangle. And here, in order to move forward, I'm going to put a swag and a swag over the top or under the top, whatever I prefer. You can do the top or the bottom, whatever. The foot, my ruler foot, is going to be my visual spacer for how, how tall this is. And I'm going to just put a little tick mark right here. The reason that I want the tick mark is that visually I want you to be looking right here for this to be the top of the curve. And so as we come back, the, the tallest part of this curvature needs to be right where this is in the middle of the triangle. Now, don't get all wound up on that. It's just something to aim for, okay? So we did one, two, three, four, and now we're here. So then we're going to go to the next triangle point, and now we have this one. So we'll go one, two, and now we can move forward in the design just like that. So from this point, this is the next position. So we're, we are using the middle for the alternating ones, right? So this bottom will touch the center of the box, and the top side will be on the box markings. Okay, so let's see. Anybody have any questions so far? Does that seem fun, interesting, useful? Okay, let's get started. Less talking, right? More sewing. Again, I want you to be able to see, so I think we'll go this way. So I'll fold that up. Just get that out of my way. Now, let's comment on something before we start. Can I make a straight line? Over a very short distance, yes I can. Over a longer distance, I start getting a little worried. What I want you to do is I want you to look for this dot and I want you to move your fabric straight towards it as best you can. I don't want you to pause in between. I want you to just go and try to get right to the dot. If we stop, if we kind of hesitate, that's when we have trouble. So use your needle and your eyeball right there, look ahead of you, and I want you to just try to get right to that dot. Don't look at your needle, look at the dot. Okay, pretty good. And again, I've got a position to aim for down here. I wanna go as straight as I can, so just look ahead and aim for the dot. Okay, now this is two and a half. As you get three and four and your line gets longer, it is a little bit more challenging. If you can't make a straight line, make a curvy line on purpose. Just pick whatever shape that you feel like you can consistently do and do it. Now, I'll tell you right now, I can't see behind, right? So you may want to cant your sandwich just a little bit. We want to aim for this dot. So if you are more comfortable going over the top, you can do your bottom one first. And we're trying to aim right there for the tallest right there. And then use your foot as a spacer and go over the top and aim for the dot. Okay, so now let's go to the next one. Aim for the dot. If you miss the dot, who cares? Just keep on sewing, it's fine dot over the top. Okay, so again, aim for the dot. Now, I'll tell you the truth. When I get to this position, I just want to do the next one and get the next triangle. So sometimes I've forgotten, wait, I've got to do my fill because I have to go backwards. So just keep that in your mind that you got to do this part first. Okay, and then Right here is the center, so visually I don't have a dot, so I'm gonna make one. I'm gonna make a visual mark with my eyes and just go down to the center as best I can. Okay, so does this look perfect? It doesn't, but I'm okay with that. I don't need it to be perfect, I just want it to look fun and good and smooth as best as possible. Okay, so let's just keep on going. Now, I've shown you this pattern Okay, I'm gonna turn it so you could see a little bit more of it. 
right? This is what we get. We get these double swags. We can make it fit very precisely in basically any width that we want to. So we can definitely do this in bigger ones. Could I do this with rulers? Of course, of course. If you want ultra precision, do it with a ruler. That's totally fine. Let's make a variation now. The key for this design is once we do the triangle, whatever fill we have in here, we have to be able to get back to this position to move forward. So let's vary it up. So here, I'm gonna put a little curvature in there, a little curly cue. And when I come back out, I'm gonna go over the top so I can fill in the top a little bit more. Okay, and then if I have that same visual, if this is my space, I'm gonna aim for that center, right? And I'll go straight to it, try to make it as smooth as possible. And then we'll come up to the other dot. Oh, wait, see, I keep wanting to go to the other dot. So here we came in and we want the smaller part of this curvature so that we can go over the top. So when we make the curl, it's sort of the bottom. So we're gonna visually space it around our center and then we'll fill it when we come back around like that. Okay, and then let's go to the next dot and get our next triangle made. All right, I'll do one more of these. So these curves will be back to back like this. Okay, so remember we're gonna do the, the inner one first, tuck it in, and then we'll use the over top in order to fill it in. And you can make these as big as you want. You can come in and you can put another little line in there if you want to. So again, here's my center position. It's this box. And when we do this bottom section, we're looking sort of for the middle of that space to create that isosceles triangle. So just go straight to the dot. Now let's put a different variation in. I'm gonna put a little curl in the bottom uh, and I want it to be a little bit small. And you can kind of follow it back or not. It's okay if it doesn't match perfectly. And then I'm gonna go hook and back. So this is just a little different design. And we'll do that just a couple of more times so you can see that also. A small hook. And kind of following it back a little bit as best you can. And then push it, come up, and hook it back. Alright, so then we did, let's do something different. We'll do one more variation, right? Okay, so again, that'll give us two triangles to make the variation. So I think I'm going to scoot it over. I don't want this to be too skinny. Alright. Okay, and we'll go like this. So you're going to get a lot more thread buildup right here at your triangle with that one. So that's just a little bit of a different look. Okay. And so same thing, we're doing this little arc on the bottom. And then one on top of it a little shorter. And then one on top of that a little shorter. And then this one would come just a little bit beyond in order to make that triangle there. All right, so again, I can fill this triangle right here and I can do whatever I want. If I wanna do something like free motion, I can literally just go like this and I can put a curve in it and come back and I'll do another one. And as long as I travel back, now I can just keep on going and I can do the other side. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of options that you can do with this path. And it's really, really pretty easy to follow. So let's cut that. All right, so here's what we got out of that. Just so you can see real quick. Right, just plain. We can do more swags if we want to. We can fill up more of those swirls and random stuff. Okay, so the back is variegated, right? 
And then this is our little triangle swag on the back with no lines. Love it. Love it with no lines, right? It's always the best. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that last one really quickly. I think we can probably use the space that we have here. Um, let's do it in a little smaller space. I think circles, you know, in order to fill up the space, you have to do a lot of them, right? We know that because they're because we're not trying to make giant circles. We're trying to make pebbles. I'm trying to get my bobbin thread up, but it's misbehaving right now. There we go. Okay. See my pretty? Love it. It's variegated. It's fancy. All right. Put our needle down right there. Get these extra threads out of there. All right, so let's just make some circles. Don't be in a hurry. Just try to make them round. And we're not trying to make them fill every single spot, okay? So just work on trying to, if your circle's not round, it's okay. Still just try to follow the line of the circle, right? tracing back over what you've already done. Try that. Okay, so don't worry about if it's round, if it's a little oblongy, uh, it's fine, it's cobblestones. What pebble do you know is perfectly round, right? Okay, so we do wanna vary our size. So let's make a bigger one here. You'll kinda of fill that in. It's okay if there's a gap on the bottom. Then we'll make a little one. So again, don't rush it. It's okay. Better to have that control of that motion without worrying about having to race your machine. It's okay. You don't have to race it. Okay, so let's put a little smaller one there and I'll make this one kind of bigger. So this one, see how he kind of wings out away from it? I don't prefer that. Most people don't. You want them to kind of touch at the tangent. But when we put our other thread on there, I think we'll be able to figure something out for that. So let's put a big one in there just because we can. That's always useful if you kind of need to like clean up your pattern. Just make one that fills everything. Okay, medium size. So notice that we're not trying to fill every little spot. That's kind of important for the next part of it. Okay, it's okay if we have it open. We don't need to worry about that. The sash boundary would probably fill that anyway. So in your mind as you practice these, try to make them as round as you can because that skill is control. That's what you're getting out of that. The more that you can control the shape, the more you can control any shape. Okay. Go around another time. It won't hurt anything, right? If you need to get to a different spot, just keep following it around. It'll be fine. Okay, so we're pretty much done. So we'll just cut it. Okay. And this is a fun fill for a border. And notice it's okay. There's a gap. I'm not worried about that. Right here, your boundary line would be ditched probably. And that's a little space. If that's empty, who cares, right? But we're gonna fix that anyway. Okay, so I have to change threads. So real quick, I'm gonna see if I have any comments that I can address. It's always hard for me to scroll down because it has this stars thing on here and I can't get to my comments. Oh, okay, let's see. I'm not seeing any pauses or any video issues on my end, um, but you know, I know we have people everywhere so you never know what can happen, right? So I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit. Hello from Delaware, you missed the start, but I'm glad you're here, Louise Williams. Lois, did I say it wrong? Lois, right? Okay. No E. 
Um, okay, so let's see. I'm just going to look and see if there were any questions real quick. Very hard to scroll down on my phone. I thought I had a better setting. Hello, Miss Betty. This fabric is ancient. Ancient. Got it in Korea a long time ago. It's actually kind of a washed out look to it, but I love this wave. You could even use this as a free motion quilt pattern and just follow that. I can't tell you the name because I don't have any salvage for it, dear, but it's very, very old. I think it'd be very hard to find. Um, okay, so this is blue. So let's put a different color on. I'll let you guys pick. Let me go down to the bottom so I can see what you actually pick. All right, let's see. I'm Just give me a second. Sorry. <laughs> Here's my choices, right? Hi, Donna. It's good to see you guys. So I feel like you guys are my friends. I'm visiting with my friends. I've missed everybody. Hi from Norway. These are my two. Sue says pink. So you can, so if I, if I get like a second for pink, a pink is my favorite color, but the color, it is good dye. Oh my gosh, it's really close, isn't it? I, I was going to redo my nails. I did break one and I'm like, oh, I can't. I don't have enough time. Pink, it is. Pink is my favorite color. <laughs> so, okay, let me show you something on your machines in case you guys don't know this, right? This is being on my machine like this, okay? If you ever run a mini spool like this on your machine, you need a special spool cap. This is going to go inside like this, and when the thread draws off, it's not going to catch on that. So don't put the little tiny spool cap on there. Make sure you're using your special spool cap, okay? Use this one like this. Otherwise, run it like this, okay? All right, so let's put it on, and we'll get threaded. It just takes a second. Thanks for waiting. I appreciate that. You know, I can't show you the cool stuff if I don't uh, do that. So while I've got you guys here, I'm going to mention that um, signups for the Salt Lake City Quilt Festival in Salt Lake City, Utah are ongoing, and that event is coming up. That is July 21, 22, and 23. So if you're in that area and you would like to have a live class, I have several ruler classes and some free motion classes that will be hosted by them. And so I'd love to meet you in person if you are close to that area. I cannot see what I'm doing. There you go. Okay, got it. Oh, I love how easily that threads. Okay, so what I'm going to do on the hearts, let's do that one first. I think this one is awesome to put a double layer on. I think if it's irregular and it doesn't look perfect, if you go ahead and you put another color on top of it and you do the same design, it looks awesome. So here's the idea. Um, let's see if we can just come in a little closer so you can have a tighter view. I'm going to come inside the existing part of the heart. So this part is the heart. So kind of as I get to this part, I'm gonna come in and make a little echo and come to the inside here, to the center. And then that's where I'll transition. So in and to the center where it touches and then inside to the center and then inside to the center. So this is what we're trying to, to do. All right, let's see how I do, right? <laughs> let's, let's hope it works out. All right, we have to turn off our threading lock. Okay, I think we're good now. It was pinning me to the fabric. All right, so for people that want to know, I'm using an isocord thread on top. Both of the threads that I've used, all three of them actually were isocord today. And the thread that's on the bottom is 5032, which is my favorite Fantastico variegated, okay? So again, what we said is here, we're going to tack off just a little bit. I've got a thread that's, you know, over the top here. So I'm just going to cut it so we don't drag it with us. And now I'm going to go inside the heart and get to the middle. And when I get to the middle, I'm going to come inside the next heart. Okay. So from there, I'm going to come inside the middle, come right back to that center. And that's where the transition is. You can 
make it a very narrow transition or you can do whatever your foot will allow you to do based on the size of your heart. So I'm gonna still try to get to the center. So you can see right there, this doesn't actually touch. Well now when I put this in here, maybe it will. Having a little bit more visual distraction means the design has to be less perfect, right? Which is what I want. I want it to be less perfect because I don't wanna to have to deal with that. As bright as this pink is, I don't think it shows up on this gray as well as it does on black. Okay, so what do you think so far, right? Let's go ahead, we'll do the whole line and then we'll flip it over so we can see how that appears on the back. So the back will be a single color, but variegated. So just very casually right at that center, transition to the other side, right there. Transition, it's kind of like a little echo that you're doing. But it frees you from your heart having to be so perfect. Right, so I really appreciate that. And I think it decoratively, I think it looks awesome. Plus if you have a quilt that's kind of got a little bit of bulk on it, this can be great because it can take up a little bit more, especially if you're working in a larger area. Okie doke. So over here we don't have as much chalk, so we'll show you on this side. Boom, boom, boom. What do you think? Right? I'll go back a little bit. It's a little too close, right? <laughs> Let's go out so your, your eyes are not popping out of your head. Right? Okay, flip it over. Dun, dun, dun. Love it. It's fun. And it's a little bit, a little bit irregular, and I'm totally fine with that. So... Um, Nancy asked the name of the thread. I'm using Isocord for the top threads. It's a 40 weight polyester. And I'm using Fantastico 5032, which is a variegated thread made by Superior Threads. And that is my bobbin thread. Okay, now let's change. I didn't think this pink showed up. I think we want the green, right? We want some green. So let's put some green pebbles. We'll just flip this. I want you to be able to see it a little better, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this on. Put the green on. Again, I am using my special little spool pin that keeps that spool nice and steady, rock steady on there, and it makes sure that he's gonna feed off without any of the thread getting trapped around the spool pin or any problems like that, which I've had in the past. So most machine companies do have that special spool pin, but a lot of people don't know what its purpose is. And I absolutely love it. I think it's fabulous. So make sure you use that if you want to. All right, so let's go over here. We're gonna start with our little circles. And we'll put this extra color on there. Remember we said that what we're trying to do is help if you have irregularities, then this is just something that you can do. And we don't necessarily have to make this follow the circles that were already there. So don't feel like that is the requirement. If you want to, you can, but it's not necessary, right? So if we had empty space over here, right? I can just put a different circle over the top. So I think it's important that we're not trying to follow the circle design that was already on there, but this is our chance to put another layer of color and possibly fill in those gaps that were troubling. Then because the design is a little bit busier, it also means that there'll be more distraction for the eye. We need a little one right there. Okay, so if I need to, I can come over here, I'll change directions, and that way I can continue my pattern without having a big drama right there. Let's 
So we'll put in a little one right here because we need a little green right there. And maybe another little one right there. All right, and then we'll just keep on going. I think with this one, if you try to follow the exact pattern that's already on there, it's really hard because it, it would cross over in odd places. No matter what, you wouldn't get the impact of the two different threads. So here on the top, fill in that little gap right there. So this would help us to just fill this in a little bit more fully. And it really makes it so that if there are problems with our circles, nobody can tell. like fun random things right it's okay it doesn't have to be perfect so on the triangle one I'm probably less likely to to do that just because this design is already I think pretty easy to follow and it has the variations already within this but you know you could you could come back over it if you just want to put another layer of color you can maybe do this as a little arc and put one over the top and do this as an arc and one over the top or in the middle even if, if these were wider you could put your colored one in the middle travel color in the middle travel and then you could just echo your swirl with another color if they don't fit or you can put a, one on top so there's a lot of different options that you have for varying up your design so I hope you had fun today. I'm going to keep this sample and we'll fill this in with some other um, bits. But I think that these are just a couple of designs that give you some ideas for how to move along that linear path and let you camouflage issues if you feel like you need to, which, you know, we all have a little bit of that. I'm just going to keep sewing. <laughs> like, if, I, if I worried about every mistake, I wouldn't have any fun. So just um, enjoy it. Happy quilting. Have a great time. I couldn't see all the comments, so I will go back and look at them. I don't know why I have so much trouble on my phone, but anyway, so I will try to respond to your comments if there's any questions. I hope you guys have an amazing day, and let me show you one thing before you leave. I got to show you one cool thing that I made. So it's relevant for our free motion content, and we mentioned that I'll be teaching at Salt Lake City. So this design, let's see if we can come, come out just a little bit. This is a free motion design. It's using the Westerly Circles on Quilts tools to make the circle. So that development is part of the class and it uses a lot of the same colors that we played with today. And it's about how you can create your own mandala, which is this awesome central motif. It's an awesome whole cloth and it's just, good practice for free motion so there's a lot of designs that are in here that you can learn and play with and make your own so if you're interested in that that's one of the classes that i'll be promoting at uh, salt lake city so have a great day you guys and i will be here next week the salt lake city show is the weekend of the 21st through the 23rd so that weekend there will be no free motion fridays just for your knowledge and i'll post that okay have a great day Bye-bye.